everybody, and welcome along to Sound and Vision live free coverage of rounds three and four of the Porsche Carrera Cup North America presented by Visit Cayman Islands. John Heinoff and Jeremy Shaw with you on another picture-perfect day on the streets of Long Beach. Uh, it's is a tad cooler than it was yesterday, and by a tad cooler, I'm talking probably about uh, 15, well, certainly 13 degrees Celsius. We're on the uh, left-hand coast of California, and the Long Beach Street Circuit has, ha has such a long and wonderful history here uh, that, I mean, surely you must know it off by heart now, running down to turn one down Shoreline Drive, round the back of the fountain, uh, then down onto Pine, turn right onto East Seaside Way, and then through turns 9, 10, and the hairpin at 11 to finish the lap. Brand new pace car for this event. It's a 992 GT3 street car in racing yellow. A uh, beautiful looking thing, 503 horsepower from a four litre naturally aspirated flat six Porsche engine sitting at the back. That's come down from the Porsche Experience just south of uh, Los uh, just south of uh, Los Angeles, uh, the Porsche experience there been opened uh, for a little while now, and you could be driving that car if you wanted to. It's part of one of the GT experience packages. You'd work up to that car, and if you think some of those statistics are similar to what we'll be talking about in the race car, that's because that car is the road going equivalent of the Carrera Cup car. Same double wishbone front suspension, same engine with the same output. Basically, it is a race car for the street, and that's what's leading these cars around here. Jeremy Shaw is with me, John Heindhoff, in the Haggerty Global Broadcast Centre as we head off on the formation lap. And championship leader with a perfect two wins from two, Jeremy, uh, Kai van Berlo had a great Sebring, now a different challenge, shorter track, no room for error, but he's planted his Kelly Moss Road and race number three Porsche on pole position. Yeah, as you say, a perfect start to the season. Uh, three pole positions, now two race wins, uh, and uh, a fastest race lap uh, 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 as well in the first race at CB. The, 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 the total sweep was, presented, uh, was prevented only in the second race uh, at Sebring, where Riley Dickinson took the extra pole, uh, the other point, if I should say, for fastest race lap. But uh, yeah, what a start it's been. But it's not been easy because, as we saw in qualifying again this morning, super tight up at the front. Uh, a split qualifying for the first time for Porsche Car Carrera Cup North America. We had the Pro Ams and the Ams go out first, and then the Pros and they will be lined up with the first 15 pro cars at the front of the field, uh, and then the pro arms and the arms following along. The pro arms and the arms are mixed together depending on where, uh, what time they actually set. So it's Kai van Berlo and Trenton Estep on the front row with 40, 40 minutes on the clock. So that's Kelly Moss and MDK Motorsport. It's Kelly Moss in the shape of Riley Dickinson uh, in the number 53 car on the inside of the second row with Lee Keane in the 311 RS Motorsport for company. Then in fifth position, Parker Thoms Thompson, Canadian for JDX Racing. He's got TJ Fisher alongside him for top racing. Those are the first three rows and they are lining up into the two by two formation now as they head down Seaside Way to turn nine. Jeremy. Yeah, and Kai Van Berlo, that perfect uh, start to the season we're talking about, he actually clipped the wall early in qualifying yesterday, uh, and, and he was also on the oldest tyres when he set that fastest time right at the end of the session to get away the pole position, so it's been an eventful weekend for him. You talked about him you know, not leaving any margin, he certainly didn't in qualifying. Through into the tricky final right, and caught almost a touch between the two front row Porsches there as they try to file side by side through the final corner, that tight right-handed hairpin. Green flag is in hand, and they're pretty close again as they come towards it. They've touched again. There was Michelin on Michelin 
touch there, green flag is in the air, and Kai Van Berlo streaks away, now he moved across there, was he, did he hold his line before he crossed the line, that's what the race control would be looking at, they go down towards turn 10, and the white car with the green centre stripe is Van Berlo, he leads in the turn 1, his teammate Riley Dickinson right up his tailpipe there, and follows through, Kai Van Berlo telling me earlier in the week that the only time he looks in the mirror is when he's doing his hair, so he doesn't care what's going uh, on behind him. But Dickinson has come through in the second. Trenton Esper, Estep there just slightly shuffled back as they head through turn five for the first time and down towards the newly reprofiled turn six. They'll turn left onto Pine there, down the hill to turn eight. A decent start, very slow coming up to the line, Jeremy, but beautifully judged by the two Kelly Moss road and race. Oh, and we've got a Porsche in the plants at the at the fountain, and it is the number 65 car, the white and purple machine. And that car is going nowhere for Efren Castro. That's another Kelly Moss road and race. He's actually high centered the car on the foliage there, and I'm not sure where he's going to get that one moving he's done a fine job of trimming the box hedge there but i'm not sure he's going any further jeremy yeah that's unfortunate for for Efren there he's uh, got that case he's doing his best to get it off there i tell you what but uh, really unfortunate for him he, won't oh, he has got it off at Sibri. yes he has he's, i think he's going to be able to get going uh, just about we have got full course that. yellow we have yes, got full have. course yellow that's very fortunate for him uh, I, I think uh, I think the race director there, Randy Buck, waited as long as he could uh, before throwing the the, uh, the full course caution there. But he, he he was convinced, like you and I were, that he wasn't that every caster was not going to be able to get that, that car off that uh, off that uh, out of the flower bed. Uh, but um, he, he has done. Oh, he's not. He's, now he's pulling off the racetrack. No, yeah, not... he's he's lost part of the front splitter, Jeremy, um, and. Uh, that's going to cause him some problems, particularly around here. Now, what happened to him? There was a huge slide from Kai Van Berlo, yeah. and then everybody was packed up behind, as you might imagine, yeah. and it was side-by-side -side contact uh, with... Now, which of the cars was that as they went through? It looked like it might have been Jeff Mosey, actually, uh, but he started a few, a, a couple of positions behind him. I think it might have been Jeff, but uh, in any case, you know, at, at that start there, down at turn one, it got really messy. In between one and two, he got really, really messy. Uh, poor old uh, uh, Trenton Essek got mugged at the start, first of all, by the by the pole sitter. Uh, we'll have to see what race control says about that start, like you were talking. We're going to have a look at that perhaps just shortly. But behind him, uh, down at the first corner... Uh, he was also pushed wide by Riley Dickinson, was Trenton Esther, but that allowed Parker Thompson to get ahead of him, heading towards the fountain section. Uh, and then going into the fountain section, uh, Trenton Esther hit, hit the back of Parker Thompson, put that car well sideways, uh, and that's what uh, initiated that whole thing Frank R behind them, I think. Uh, but the, the upshot is that Parker Thompson got in the third position, and the fourth with Trenton Esther, we're going back to green. Yeah, without having the... Um safety car that GT3 having to come back out again that's really smart work by Randy Buck and those involved in race control they just basically neutralized that part of the track realized that Edward Castro had got going again and held the safety car from going onto the track so we're back to racing very quickly indeed and Kai Van Berlo has had to do it again but this time from a single file start and he's pulled out a wee bit on his teammate the two white cars with the green stripes the one with the red on the front and the rear valances is Riley Dickinson in second place up in the third Parker Thompson from JDX Racing in the Shell sponsored car good to see him up the sharp end of the field making a big commitment again this year to this championship was one of the front runners last year as was Riley Dickinson as was Kai Van Berlo and any of those drivers may have won the championship last year uh, had it not been for Sebastian Priel who's moved on out of the championship into World Endurance Championship amongst other things using this as a springboard Trenton Estep then going through in fourth position just ahead of TJ Fisher for top racing Good to see DeMarcos back in as well in the 311 RS. He's got ahead of Lee Keane, who, as Jeremy said, did get pushed back at the start just a little bit. Down towards turn one and the apex car, the white, red, 
yellow and blue car. That's TJ Fisher for Top Racing. We can right in behind him in that number eight car. Nice restart, Jeremy, from the front of the field that time around. Yeah, it was uh, nice and clean, and uh, they sort of spread themselves out a little bit, giving themselves a little bit of breathing space up in the front there. But Kai Van Bulo settling in here, Riley Dickinson with that. Uh, the, the, the three racing for children's cars that are in this race, uh, and they're each distinguishable uh, by so a little bit of that, uh, extra colour on the, the bottom part of the front bumper, if you like. And uh, the, the car that's leading what Kai Van Bulo, that's got the, uh, the, the white section there, and then right behind him with its sort of a reddish or pinkish colour is uh, Ryan Dickinson in second position and then let's show the top up car for JDX Racing and Parker Thompson from Canada hanging on in third place just ahead of the front row start of Trent and Essep who was, uh, he's going to be feeling pretty aggrieved I think about what happened there in the first few hundred yards of the race In 15th position Justin O. Oaks for Nola Sport leads the Pro-Am category. All the cars are the same, by the way. It is the driver's experience, and in some cases their age, that sets them uh, apart. He's ahead of Alan Metney for Kelly Ross Racing and Jeff Mosing for Top Racing in third. And in uh, Arm, in a very creditable 19th position, MDK Motorsport, Mark Muame in the uh, number 43 car. He's got Kurt Swearing in between himself and the second position in that category, which is the number 57 car of John Getz from Wright Motorsports. That's how they stand, but still 33 minutes on the clock. Plenty of racing to go here, Jeremy, and this is a track that's going to be tough on these Michelin tyres. The tyre techs uh, and the drivers and engineers will be pleased that the temperatures dropped a bit from yesterday. Yeah, it was really toasty yesterday, that's for sure. And a little bit of a breeze this morning as well, so, you know, it's, uh, conditions are a little bit different out there. Uh, but uh, there's battles all the way up and down the field here. And uh, you talked about a few minutes ago, a good start there by uh, Dimitri Demarcos. Uh, he made up, he actually made up one position, but he's ahead now of his teammate, more experienced by far, Lee Keane, who got shuffled back from, from fourth to eighth in that opening lap. That uh, means I hit the back of the third and fourth across the line. It looks like Trenton Esset might have the advantage but on the left hand side going down into turn one is the preferred line that's the inside line for the left hander Parker Thompson just about manages to hold on to that third position yeah and you are not allowed to put your right hand side Michelin's into the pit lane exit there think of it as a brick wall when you're coming out of the pit lane you're not allowed to blend earlier but you're not allowed to steal any of that pit lane entry to open up turn one either and when you're side by side there you have to be really careful that uh, you do not drop your michelin tires on the right hand side of your porsche across that double yellow so race control have been pretty hot on that this weekend uh, and they will be looking at all of those incidents. The battle for 7th and 8th. Dimitri Demarcos uh, for 3.11 in the black Porsche, just going down Seaside now. And uh, in behind him, the almost all red car, almost looks like a stock road car. There's a little bit of sponsorship on there with the 3.11 RS logo on the front end of the car. That's Lee Keane in the uh, number 12 car, so 11 and 12. Fighting for 7th and 8th, round the hairpin now and back on the shoreline drive. The leader, Kai Van Berlo, by half a second from his teammate Riley Dickinson. Thompson up into 3rd position, yes he has got through into 3rd position. Holds onto it there, across the line, he must have been outdragged the last time around because it shows him as uh, making up that position last time around. So Thompson from Este, then Fisher, McCann, then the DeMarcos Keane battle for the top 8. Fascinating battle up front here because uh, Riley Dickinson in that second position has set fastest lap, fastest race lap on two of the last three laps. Uh, but uh, Kai Van Berlo has still managed to, to maintain that advantage. And, uh, and uh, interestingly, on each of those laps, Van Berlo has gone a little bit quicker each time. What that tells me is that Ryan Dickinson has a really fast car here and he's driving it beautifully, but he can't find a way right past what Kai Van Berlo, who again I think he's just been he doesn't push too hard too soon on this uh, on this fresh set of tyres and I'm pretty sure everybody has started on for this race. What do we know about the young Dutchman Kai van Berlo, Jeremy? We've seen it last season, we saw it again at Seabring. His ability 
to pace himself, the car and the Michelin tyres through the full 40 minutes is almost without peer. He, I think you said that both the races at, at Sebring, he said, was immaculately judged by him. He always seemed to be able to find a little more pace when people behind started putting him under pressure. And it seems like he's playing exactly the same strategy here. Yeah, I think so. Again, he's, he's, for, a, for a young man, he's got a really, really smart head and shoulders. He's 21 years of age. Is, uh, is Kai Van Berlo. Uh, and this battle for third and fourth, it's, uh, it's still hot as well, isn't it? With Parker Thompson holding on dearly ahead of Trenton Estep. Clearly, I think Estep's car is a little bit faster at this stage, but Parker Thompson is doing all the right things there. That battle they had a couple of laps ago, down Shoreline Drive and into turn one there, looked like the uh, the number six car of Trent Tedesco was able to get a really good jump off the hairpin and actually had the leaders across the start finish line. But Parker Thompson's car, I think, perhaps trimmed out a little bit better, faster on the straight and able to hold that inside line going into the left hander at turn one. Super battle between those two. And now this is probably the biggest lead that there has been between the first two as well as they ran the hairpin uh, just about to complete lap eight. And it was the really fastest lap uh, overall right. by the last time around by, Trent, by uh, Kai Van Berlo in the lead. So the Pro-Am leader is the uh, multi-coloured number 47. And thanks to uh, Keith and the team for showing us that car uh, on our screens. And that's just a note. That was the car that was involved with Efren Castro right at the beginning of the race. And... Uh, now that I've seen that car properly, um, I've got blurry video in my head, but I I'm pretty certain that that was the car that went side by side. And there's a little bit of a rub mark on the right front tyre of Justin's car. That is the car that's just going into turn five now, turn four now, excuse me. And he's right on the back of the end of the pro field. He's setting a very good pace indeed. Alan Metney is four seconds behind, and Alan Metney is no slow coach in the pro-am category, Jeremy. No, that's right. Uh, and you know, came within an ace of winning the uh, pro-am championship last season. Here's another look at this battle for third and fourth. A, a late move to the inside by Trenton Estep, but just realising at the last minute he was carrying too much speed into the corner, has to abandon ship, if you like, steer it hard right, or, right across the bow to Clark Thompson and into the escape road. So, boy, that was a, a very tight S moment indeed for both of those two. Scandinavian flicking it round to scrub some yeah. speed off in the runoff at, at turn one going straight on then uh, on shoreline drive should have turned left onto aquarium way there that's what the sat nav would have been seeing now meantime coming out of the pits that is the gmg racing car journey is then the uh, the ukraine the ukrainian flag colored car that is out of the pit lane so that is just coming out of the pit lane now uh, we've got a ah that was a drive through for Kyle Washington, passing under yellow, and so that is why the gold, the uh, the Kyle Washington GMG car was coming out of the pit lane, so that's dropped him all the way to the back of the field of the cars that are running. So that tidies that one up for you. Still just under half an hour uh, to run some daybreak coming out of turn. Turn eight, won't it? And Kyle staying out the way of the cars that come through. He's going to lap back in that very distinctive half and half blue and yellow machine. So, oh, big dive down the inside. That was a ridiculous manoeuvre. And two cars involved. Estep trying to make up some of the ground that he'd lost in the MDK Motorsports car. And he's absolutely taken out Grant Tolkien, the ACI Motorsports machine, the number 81, that's the green and black machine. Uh, I have a suspicion that Trenton might be getting asked to race control to have a word with race director and there will be no coffee or biscuits for him uh, there, I'm afraid. Unabated speed, yes, there was people locking up ahead of him. Oh, there's another car involved as well. 
all kinds of carnage going on down at the hairpin. That's the, is that the 29 that's gone around there as well, Jeremy? The uh, red and white car, I think it is. Yeah, Jeff Myshak. Is that, is that Mark Quarry? It no, is I Mark Quarry. It, it is. Yeah, it's so, Mark Quarry. Yeah, his teammate to Trent Bezza, he was leading. Oh, this, this is a huge... Class. Right, so what's happened is that Estep, the two leaders have spun. And Estep has broken his radiators, and Riley Dickinson didn't get pointing in the right direction as quick as his teammate. It's absolute carnage here, because it is very slippery indeed as you're coming out of turn 11. So that was Kai van Verlo and Riley Dickinson. Dickinson's dropped down to, what, sixth position now? And so that's Parker Thompson has gone through in the yellow, full course, in the second rather, full course yellow. And we will now see the bright yellow GT3. I think Mark Kwame has got going again. Yes, he has. So the only car out of all of that that hasn't moved is Grant Torgi in the ACI Motorsports, the green and black car. But I'm pretty certain that, that what happened there was Trenton Estep's radiators at the front of, the, of his car were burst on the impact. Yes, they were. Yeah, the six car as it went around for MDX. He just arrived there and dived down the inside of the top racing 77. That's the Wiley car. And he sort of made that one, but nailed the door of Grant Torquay. Well, that was ambitious to say the very least, Jeremy. No, it was a mistake. <laughs> Simple as that. Uh, it was. Uh, he just got carried away there. He, he, he knew he was fast, so he went for the lunge, but he forgot to brake. Uh, he just braked way, 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 way too late there. You know, he he he, he braked probably you know, two car lengths, which is way, 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 and it, as, as uh, competitive these cars are, uh, later than he needed to. Uh, there's no rubber down there on that inside line. You know, the racing line is out wide there to the left-hand side in order to give you enough yourself enough turning circle to get around the hairpin yeah. corner because it's really tight there so yeah, if you're going to go to the inside you've got to just flick the car completely sideways under braking and that he failed to do and because uh, Grant Torquid's car was already on that path tra trajectory in any case so yeah that was a mistake from Trenton Essep look uh, you know you're going to make mistakes every now and again. He's a super talented young man, and it's just it's really unfortunate that uh, the race should end that way. And particularly for Grant Torquay, of course, who was the innocent party in that uh, entire episode. Uh, and, uh, and we should say um, that is very uncharacteristic uh, from yeah. Trent and Estep. It's not for me to defend any race driver when they've made a mistake. Um, but uh, clearly frustrated, I think, that he'd missed his breaking point down at Turn 1 the previous lap. He knew he was embroiled in a battle there, needed to get past those cars as quickly as possible, but was maybe a little bit greedy that time around. Uh, the radiator... Um, oh, right, so there was another impact from that number 29, the red and white car, Mark Varmit, and that was when cars were turning themselves around. Well, and what happened there was, uh, I, I think, uh, perhaps Mark Kwame had spun there, and, yeah. and Jeff Myshak in, in the tw number 29, the red and white car, he was quite some way back, and really should have slowed down more. I mean, OK. Uh, he then the leaders have, spun. That was bizarre. Both leaders spinning there, almost in unison. That was incredible. Riley Dickinson Never didn't, seen that before. Riley Dickinson didn't commit to the throttle there. I reckon no. he would have got all the way around yes. if he had done. It's dropped him, <laughs> dropped it down to sixth position. But where the concrete wall is coming at you. Oh, really dear me. Bizarre. But uh, apparently, um, for artistic impression, the, uh, the two Kelly Moss racing cars have been given a 5.9, which is lovely. Yes, I think so. Well deserved, too. I mean, absolutely <laughs> magnificent. And uh, for, for Kai Van Berlo, that was just a complete 360. Off he goes. Uh, the lap time, by, by the way, was a 127.1. One. So having slowed down a bit, you know, for, for the for the incident of the hairpin and had the spin there, it still only cost him seven seconds, which is really remarkable. <laughs> Quite <laughs> extraordinary. So behind the bright yellow Cayman Islands safety car, the GT3 from the uh, Porsche Experience Centre, just up the road, uh, we have Kai van Berlo. Yes, it is. Yeah. Um, just the confluence of the two big high rate weirs, isn't it? Um, yep. Just the other side of where our Scott uh, racetrack used to be. Yep. Agajanian Southern California Oval Track. We used to spend a lot of Saturday nights 
back in the eighty s when i first came over here just absolutely loved it sensational racing and and that's that's on the sort of the north west corner of the 405 and the i guess it's the 110 there yeah uh freeway is it where yeah where the where the 405 and the and the 110 collide is what the uh, the uh, the uh, the ads used to be for Ascot Raceway. Uh, it, and, and, I mean, you can drive all kinds of cars there, including the GT3. You have to work your way up to that. Uh, and also, um, I, I really shouldn't say this because it is one of my favourite places to go when we're here. There's a very, very good restaurant there. It's called 917. And uh, that's open outside the times that you can go and drive cars there. And it is absolutely brilliant. That's the Porsche Experience Centre LA. If you'd like more details about that, Go to porschedriving.com forward slash slash Los Dash Angeles. Porschedriving.com forward slash Los Los Angeles. Porsche. Just just search for uh, Porsche Experience Center LA. All the details are there. And also a big glass wall on the right when you um, uh, when you walk in that is into the workshop which is one of the places that they restore classic Porsches. And it is absolutely astounding what you see uh, in there. Always worth a, a visit if you're passing by. So behind the safety car then, Kai Van Berlo for Kelly Moss Road and Race, Parker Thompson for JDX, Top Racing's TJ Fisher, then the McCann Racing uh, number uh, eight car. So that's four, four different teams there as Michael McCann is in that number eight. Uh, then 311 RS, so that's five different teams in the top five. With Demagos there, Dimitri Demagos in fifth position. This young man who burst onto the scene at the last in the last races of last season in what was supposed to have been a one-off or a three-off, as it were, because it was a triple header uh, to Michelin Raceway Road Atlanta, has uh, come back. 311 of RS have uh, persuaded him to come and do a full series. And he was in a 911-991 car last year. And my goodness me, the promise that he showed there, Jeremy, has been already fulfilled uh, in the early part of this season. Absolutely right, John. And 311 RS made it possible for Dimitri Gerard. They didn't just invite him. I mean, they, they've made it possible. They've actually put all the deals together for him. And uh, uh, and he's uh, taken full advantage of it. What a talented young, young man he is. And uh, a great uh, great young man as well. I tell you, his dad's, a, his dad's a real character. They couldn't be more different, actually, father and son, than the Marcos is. But uh, they're both uh, super nice people. And D Dimitri, for one with such little experience, I mean, as you say, that was his first ever pro race at uh, Michelin Raceway Road Atlanta at the end of last season. And he, he comes out this season and, and he had two good, uh, good strong runs at Sebring. Comes here for his first ever time on a street circuit and here he is in the top five. That's pretty darn good for somebody who has very, very little racing mileage compared to most of the other contenders in this race. That's Jeremy Shaw. He's in the Hangley Global Broadcast Centre with me, John Hindhoff. Uh, thanks to our camera operators and technical and production squads both here at Long Beach and up at Charlotte as well, of course. Uh, for NASCAR Productions and IMS Productions, of course, this weekend, as this is a shared event. Thank you to all the hard work, for all the hard work that's gone on so that we can see all the way around this fantastic just under two mile circuit. Still a little bit of clear up to do uh, as we're heading into the last 16 minutes, but there's still a bit of racing to go here. So it means Guy Van Berlo will have to start all over again, and he will have this time Parker Thompson behind him, not his teammate. Now, Parker was right in the mix last year for the championship, as was Kai Van Berlo. One I was gonna say bad weekend, it was a bad weekend for him at VIR and crashed out of one race and didn't get the score and Kai I think ruse that this is a championship Jeremy um, as we saw last year in the first ever Carrera Cup North America yes we've had Porsche Cup racing but not as Carrera Cup with the full pro class as we had last year and continue this year I think uh, Kai slightly rude that but it does it does show how tight this championship is in all three classes that really one bad weekend, one moderate weekend, actually, might give you a problem if you're chasing the championship. 
Yeah, true that. Uh, and, uh, and so that's, yeah, that's why Trentinessa was fighting so hard to get back up, uh, you know, into the, into the mix there. Uh, but that's uh, ultimately co cost him, you know, he's not going to finish this race. And, and with uh, what, uh, 16, um, 15 uh, pro cars in this race, yeah, that'll, that'll give him, uh, you know, you'll lose a lot of ground in, in the championship standings. But, uh, yeah, there's still a long, long, long way to go. Uh, and he's just got to be, show a little bit more patience in, in, in the uh, remaining races. Plenty of time to go. Just don't make any more mistakes. He's got that one out of the way. But just go back back to Kaivan Berlin. We talked about a little bit earlier on how he was just sort of kind of building his pace steadily in this race. Yeah, the, the couple of laps before the, that incident at the hairpin, he had reset the fastest lap of the race, had our race leader Kai Van Berlo. So just going faster and faster and faster through his opening 10 laps of the race. Uh, the new fastest race lap was 1 minute 19.66, which pretty remarkably is faster than his qualifying time from yesterday. Yeah, yes. Um, and uh, yeah, that would have put him ahead of... Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six cars wow. on the uh, WeatherTech Sports Car Championship race uh, for tomorrow, so wow. A new leader in Am. We mentioned, of course, that Mark Kwame was caught up in that incident at the, the hairpin, which has been investigated, by the way, the Trent and Estep and a Grand Torquay incident. That has been investigated by race control, of course it is. I can only see that going one way, if I'm honest, not to prejudge that. But uh, John Getz is the new leader in um, in that yeah. distinctive silver and dark purple number 57 right motorsport car, Jeremy. Yeah, he did so, and, and he was uh, pressuring the the, 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 uh, the, the the leader in AM, which was um, Mark Wanning you know, before that incident there. He's a, a global equity investment manager, John Goats, from, uh, from Western Connecticut, and he's carrying the colors of uh, three different charities on that car to which he is a, a contributor. So uh, yeah, hats off to John Goats for what he does to help some uh, very deserving charities. Uh, well, it's, it's basically, uh, one of them is, is um, medical assistance to underprivileged nations around the world. There's, I think it's Medship, I think it was. Uh, and there's two others as well. I'll try and find those names perhaps in a little while. But uh, hats off to John Goes for what he does there. And uh, what a good run it has been for him in this race. He, he finished the, the early rounds at Sebring. He was a third in the second race. But he certainly should, you know, was right there in contention for the AM class there. He's leading it now. Second place is Vernon McClure. Third is Bill Smith, who was fastest of the AM cars in the first session yesterday morning. I had a chat to him in the very impressive uh, paddock area that got set up here in the convention center at Long Beach. And uh, he was just loving it. He, he, in his first ever time on a street circuit and uh, taking it all in. In fact, in that first session, top racing for much of it uh, was was fastest in all three categories. You, know, you talked about earlier on, everybody's running the same 992 Porsche here. We've got the pros, the pro ams and the am. Bill Smith was fastest in the am. Uh, Jeff Mosey was fastest in the pro am at first session. And uh, for much of it, TJ Fisher was quickest uh, at the front of the field as well. He was pipped right at the end by another couple of cars, but certainly an excellent start to the weekend for top racing. And, and TJ Fisher now running in the third place overall in colour of 58. Jeff Mosing is running in third place in Pro-Am in colour of 56. And uh, Bill Smith also in third place in Am now, colour of 42. I think we might see the safety car pull into the pit lane at the end of this lap. Just having a good look at the apex, the second apex effectively of turn 11. And once again, our track services and marshals have done a great job Thank you to all of those ladies and gentlemen as well for donating their very precious time to be here at the racetrack, without whom, of course, we could not go racing. So whether you're holding a flag in white or in other parts of the world in orange, or you are helping out in other ways in a volunteer capacity here at, at Long Beach or at any of the motorsport events around the world this weekend, we thank you very much indeed that you give up your time so that we can have our enjoyment of motorsport. Always need more volunteers, more marshals. Easy to find on the internet nowadays, uh, wherever you are. Best seat in the house, as they always say. And the safety car lights are indeed out, Jeremy. Yeah, they are. Just to follow up on that comment about John Goetz, the, the charities that he, he contributes to are, are Mercy Ships, uh, Med Send and Bowery Mission. 
uh, and um, the, you know, the, their uh, very deserted cause all of them, and as he calls it, it's a reverse sponsorship. He gives them space on the cars, uh, and for that, he gives them some money as well. So uh, hats off to, to, uh, to John Goetz for that. He's running in that uh, AM leading car number 57 for right motorsports. Yeah, it's a, it is a thread throughout all of the IMSA yeah. championships that there's a high degree yeah. of social responsibility, including yes. with the Kelly Moss Road and Race Cars, with the... Uh, the Children's Hospital car, which is at the front of the field, and uh, I think three cars now, um, three different yeah. teams supporting Alzheimer's research in Mission and Pilot Challenge, not here this weekend, and, and WeatherTech as well. Just under nine and a half minutes to go as we go back to green, and it'll be Kai Van Berlo who gets his right foot on the floor, plants the throttle, and tries to get a good run through the oil dry at turn 11, and he has got a good start but he hasn't shaken off Parker Thompson, he's there. They've broken away a little bit from TJ Fisher in the silver car, that GT silver car in third, caught napping a little bit there with the blue on that car as well, the number 58 with the blue and red, and there's a little bit of damage as well on Michael McCann's car, for McCann racing on the front, the front end of that flapping around a little bit, but once again, Kai Van Berlo for Kelly Moss Road Race, the young man who came Yes, he was a racing driver, but came to the stairs ostensibly to go to study. Oh, and another coming together, and it's down at turn one. And that is the number 77 that's amongst that. Uh, that's So that's the Wiley car, isn't it, of top racing going the opposite direction. And the other car, I think, is Carl Washington uh, in that very distinctive number... Uh, no, it's not Carl Washington, is it? It is back to you on that for the moment because we haven't yet gone yellow the point I was trying to make about uh, about Kai Von Berlo is he came here to study and then managed to sort out some racing it wasn't the other way around uh, he's uh, well into his course and across the line and another problem this time for Vernon McClure in the number 10 Kelly Moss Road and Race and he's found the concrete as well and the silver black second, and yellow car he was second in class yeah Bill Smith is going to get a really good result here if he just stays out of trouble ah, it was just an Oaks for Nola Sport was the other car involved with the 77 you're kidding that was, that was the leader in, in, in Pro-Am then correct so now Alan Metney is back to the lead and I don't think Justin has moved yet from turn one. No, he hasn't. So he's had an eventful opening race of the two this weekend. Oh, and a complete corner ripped off one of the cars. I think that's actually the number 10 that has lost it. I think that's Vernon McClure's car right front. And so this has become, I'm afraid, a very expensive weekend as the leaders go through. So it was coming down to... Must have been coming out of... Oh, it was... Oh, was there a little That's nudge right. there by Vernon? Uh, by the car behind Vernon? He's coming down to turn eight, down the straight, down Pine Avenue and just pitched off to the right-hand side, and that's moved the wall. That is a... That, no wonder it's pulled the wheel off, and he's pulled up to a halt right on the apex of Turn 8, um, behind the kerb there, and I actually think we might finish under full course yellow yeah. here, Jeremy, because that's a lot. So, oh, dear. Oh. So it was the number 77 that spun at Turn 1. That we got right, uh, and... Um, so that was the Wiley car going around and unfortunately just, an, just had nowhere to go the leader at the time in the Pro-Am category and I think he just ran into the wall trying to avoid them oh dear so that was the, the number 77 the, the Wiley car went around first the top racing car we stayed green just an Oaks came no, through no yellow uh, sorry uh, uh, when that car went into the wall, yeah. Oh, um, good fun, yep. um, it, Before we went yellow, Justin Oaks came through and had nowhere to go. And then in a separate incident, that was at turn one, down at turn, well, between seven uh, and eight. Well, seven's the kink, really. So between six and eight, if you know what I mean, going downhill there. Uh, Vernon McClure ends up in the wall. 
he must have had help there. Just a little tap. It is bumpy there. It is very bumpy indeed there. I was watching the IndyCars earlier on. Um, and the... It was the prototypes yesterday. And they were moving around a lot there. But it's not a braking area, I wouldn't have thought. Vernon's out of the car and is walking away unaided. So that's the good news. Yeah. That's the very good, good news. news. Great, great shape there for Justin Oakes, who's doing a magnificent job there, out in the lead of the Pro-Am class. This is just his second year of racing. His last season, his first season was last year in the in the Trans-Am, in the, uh, it's the SGT category, I think he, he, he was taking part in, and won. Uh, and uh, stepping up to, to the Porsche Carrera Cup North America for this year, and was uh, yeah, really doing a magnificent job. His first ever street race, uh, I think I don't think there was a transit race on the streets last year uh, that he would have uh, taken part in, but uh, a really impressive. That was a really in weird incident right. there for. Well, Bill for Smith Bernie was McClure. right there yeah. in the other in the other top racing car, but I, I don't think he was close enough to have caused that. So, not well, sure. And even after the car kind of speared off to the right. There was, you know, he, he went, it, it, the race track is quite wide at that point, and one would have thought there'd be some way to, to get that car back to the left again, uh, it, even to go straight on, you know, into the escape road there at Pine Avenue. That was that was a really weird incident, wasn't it? Yeah, and I don't see any marked damage uh, in terms of the back of Vernon's car. So he was coming down. Oh no, the. Now, did he just pinch himself because Bill was coming down the left-hand side and just scare himself with that bright orange Kung Fu car that was right there, maybe, and it just lost it on the bump. And at that point, um, it's quick down there. That new turn six is very, very quick, and you're gathering speed downhill. What it does mean is, I think, that under yellow, we're going to get Kai van Berlo taking his third of three victories. Three pulls, three victories for yep. Kai van Perlo. And and three pole positions and two out of three fastest race laps as well because he has set the fastest lap of the race, Kai van Perlo. He did that on lap 10. He just completed 20 laps. And um, yeah, if they want to continue, they could probably do two more laps under four course course and just to complete the 45 minutes. Yeah, there's two and a half they're minutes. Not, they're to not go. going back to green, that's for sure. I, I wouldn't have thought so. Um, now being told by race control that they are looking at the incident between Vernon McClure and well, they're seeing the 48. I think that would be the 42. I think it was Bill Smith that was closest. Uh, we'll get that checked out. For there isn't you. a 48, there isn't a 48. So. Uh, Jimmy Johnson's getting the blame for that one as well. <laughs> um, I'm not sure that that's really fair. Um, coming across the line to start what will be the... I think will be the last lap. Um, um, maybe not, actually. Yeah, well, a minute 42 to go. They're, they're under the safety car, they're about 2 minutes 15. All right, yeah. Last lap around. So the... New addition to the front of the field, the bright yellow GT3 from Porsche Experiment Centre LA has been out on the circuit rather more than we would like to. It's a lovely car, but we wanted to see the racing. I think we can describe that as untidy for the first race of two. Second race Sunday after the Indy cars. There'll be some walking woundies. Um, we had really Willingham not starting. The Irish, the, the Conway Irish Mike's car, I don't think we've seen this weekend, but he said he hadn't come uh, there. And then in that race, we've lost Efren Castro, Trent Nestep. Uh, we've lost the ACI Motorsports, Grant Torkey, Mark Kwame, Jeff Myshak, and Vernon McClure. So there's... It's going to be. This is not going to be a Saturday night on the strip, is it? For yeah. for those teams, I fear that in the in the convention centre where these cars are paddocked, if that is the correct way to use that word, where they have their paddock, there's going to be a bit of midnight oil being burned tonight, Jeremy. 
Indeed so, and yeah, I guess uh, Grady Willingham hit the wall yesterday. I think it was on the way to, to, to the start for qualifying that he hit, he hit the fence, and uh, we haven't seen that car since. And yeah, the, the good news, if there is any good news, is that, uh, as you said a little while ago, Porsche Motorsport North America based uh, just a few miles away from here, so whatever spare, spare parts there are in the country would be ah, there. Good so point. Easily, easily got to the racetrack, I suppose, but uh, I know there's not an awful lot of spare parts for these cars, and, uh, and brake components particularly scarce at the moment. I'm told. In fact, some of the teams were worried that we were even going to be able to get here for this race. So, um, yeah, there's going to be uh, quite a lot of work to be done there in the paddock. Um, yeah, particularly the number 10 car, that's going to be an awful lot of work yes. to get that car back out again. Check it flag, uh, Jeremy. Yeah, shouldn't be too bad. Check it flag, as we surmised. So it is unofficially at the moment with post race tech to come Kai Van Berlo who extends his championship lead with another win his third in three races 100% as far as his finishing record and his standing on the top step of the podium is concerned for the young man a 21 year old from the Netherlands and another good race for Kelly Moss as well. Riley Dickinson will be annoyed with himself. Had a nailed on second place there till he looped it on the fluids at turn 11. He'll finish down in sixth between the two Kelly Moss road and race drivers. Second for Parker Thompson and JDX Racing. That's a good points haul for Parker in his championship challenge. TJ Fisher for top racing in third position in the 58 Porsche. Michael McCann is fourth just off the podium for McCann Racing. And, oh, well, Dimitri Dimatos in fifth position for 311 RS Motorsport. I think he would have taken your hand off for that earlier on today. In the classes, Alan Metney, I think, will find feel rather fortunate to be last man standing. 11th overall and will take the Pro-Am category again for Kelly Moss Road and Race in the number 99 iFly car ahead of Jeff Mosing and Kurt Swearing. And, and in Arm... John Getz in the Wright Motorsports number 57, again, inheriting that, but there's no asterisk. He'll stand on the top step of the podium ahead of the top racing Bill Smith driven number 42. And in third place, it's another uh, JDX racing car, that of Robert Hanley. The man from Colorado will be on the podium. That's his best result uh, in the season so far. Untidy, expensive, but we will have them to come back uh, uh, tomorrow after the IndyCar race. A quick look at the points for the season so far, Jeremy. Yeah, Kai Van Berlo with just one short of the maximum here uh, will have uh, a total of uh, 80, 87 points going into tomorrow's uh, second round of the doubleheader. And Parker Thompson will move up to second position in the points table with that second place finish today. Three podiums then to start off the season for him. In Pro-Am, that's the second win of the season for Alan Metney. He had a first and a second at Sebring, so he will cement his position as championship leader in Pro-Am. In the Am class, uh, for John Goertz, he came in tied on points with Werner McClure for second position behind Mark Kouami. Uh, but with the accident for uh, for Kwame, he will still maintain the points lead going into tomorrow's race. But now John Goetz will be much closer in second position. Yeah, Efren Castro out of the race as well. Another one of the front runners uh, in um, the Pro-Am category. So no points for Efren either after going into the flower bed earlier on. Let's hope for a tidier one when we come back after the IndyCar race tomorrow. Jeremy and I will be back in the Haggerty Global Broadcast Centre for the IMSA WeatherTech race later on today. 100 minutes of action. That wasn't their best work for the Porsche Carrera Cup North America presented by VisitCaymanIslands.com and we have a three-time winner of the season. For Kelly Moss Road and Race, Kai Von Berlo at the moment is the only man who stood on the top step in the pro class. Bye for now.